This is the third video in my aluminum anodizing series, and today we're going to look at hooking the part to be anodized up to the electrical source that we're going to use to do the anodizing. This connection has to be made with aluminum wire or another form of aluminum because the connection, of course, is going to be immersed in the acid anodized bath along with the part. Any attempt to use copper, brass, or steel, all of these things would be attacked by the sulfuric acid and contaminate your anodize. In the uh, scene here, we can see we have a battery barrel a tail cap, and a heat sink that have been machined and polished from aluminum. These things are now ready to be anodized. In order to anodize them, I've got to use some of the clamps, connectors, and other pieces shown to the right of my three parts, or some of the aluminum welding wire on the roll at the back of the scene. The DMM on the right is used to verify that I do have electrical contact from the clamp to the part. The first part we're going to make a connection to is the tail cap. It's visible sender screen. Now, it happens to have been made with a 632 threaded hole in the center of it, on the inside. I'm going to use the uh, rectangular piece of aluminum bar stock that has a 632 threaded projection on the left hand side to make my connection. All I have to do in this case, and notice I'm not touching the part anywhere where it's been polished and cleaned and the anodize is going to shell. There, that's nicely tightened in there. Now what we can do is grab our DMM set it to continuity and one contact and yes, we have power flowing through the aluminum connective piece to the part. This will anodize. The second part that we need to connect is our machined and polished heat sink. Again, I don't want to get finger grease all over it. And we're going to use a U-shaped aluminum springy clamp here, made from sheet aluminum. I'm going to hold the part with a rubber gloved hand so that I don't get finger grease all over the polished and cleaned surface. The clamp gets pushed in as far as it'll go, and again we check conductivity. We have a connection between the clamp and our part to be anodized. A good connection. The last part is the battery barrel. I'm going to hook it up using this uh, clamp piece made out of aluminum that has a threaded end that can, as you can see, screw in and out so it can uh, grab the inside of different diameter uh, battery barrels. Why I want to grab the inside is because wherever you make electrical contact to the part to be anodized, that part where contact is made is not going to anodize, so we want this done. This connection made on a part of the workpiece that isn't going to show, preferably the inside. 
You'll notice there's some masking tape around one end of the battery barrel. This was used to hold the finished end in the lathe chuck while the other end was polished. I've left it on as it'll help me hold the part while I attempt to work this connective uh, piece into it. Let's hook up our battery barrel. We're going to put this inside the end and then turn the threaded part with needle nose pliers so that it expands and now we should have a connection. Again we'll check with the meter we have a connection. So all three of our parts would be ready to anodize. Now, as you use your connective clamps and connective pieces, each time you use them, they also become anodized just like the part. So to reuse them a second time, the anodized does have to be removed. This can be done by sanding or filing just in the area that would make contact with the next part. That's all that's needed to reuse them. If you're going to anodize you should probably uh, get yourself a roll of aluminum wire much like this uh, 035 diameter MIG wire that I'm showing right here. For oddly shaped parts that won't take a clamp or anything else like that, wrapping aluminum wire onto them will get you uh, your connection. But most of the time you can hook the part up by using a threaded hole in it, using a U-clamp like I'm showing here to the hollow center of the part, or in the case of our battery barrel, making up an aluminum clamp that has an adjustable width. Just remember anything you use will be immersed in the anodizing bath and therefore must be made solely of aluminum. The parts I've shown today are going to be anodized and then dyed blue using Caswell's Blue 4A dye. These three parts are going to become a host for a laser project a 445 nanometer blue laser based on an M140 diode. The blue housing should be a very nice project. When these parts are finished, I'll probably show a clip of them in a future anodizing video. I hope that today's information was useful and helpful. It's very important to get a good, reliable electrical connection to the part that you need to anodize. Here's a last look at today's parts. The blue fluid that they're in is a degreaser. Now that they're connected electrically and the electrical connection has been checked and found to be good, they're getting a final degrease cleaning, then they'll be anodized.